So the third thing is locations. Uh, so locations are really important to the cost of the film. Um, and it's not just the type of locations, it's the amount. Again, people get caught up going, well, I just won't have it set in uh, a palace because, you know, a palace is somewhere that's going to be expensive. Um, but it's actually, that might be easy. You could have an entire film set in a palace that you can somehow access or your entire film is happening there, so it's worth spending the money on. Where scripts get into trouble is it's the amount of locations they have in the screenplay. So when you're in pre-production on a film, um, and so the pre-production is the planning of shooting your screenplay, each location needs to be found uh, and it needs to be paid for. So um, having a lot of locations will really stretch the production's resource, resources. And it's quite deceptive because your screenplay might have 30 locations, which doesn't sound like necessarily a huge amount. I mean, some films have a lot more than that. But that means production is probably going to have to look at 100 locations to get the right 30 that they want. So things will happen. You go, okay, there's a scene in a cafe. And it's kind of like, okay, what sort of cafe is it? How does it look? We need to look at a few different cafes to find one that's right for the production, right for the look, works logistically and within the budget. Because you might find one that you love and then they go, okay, good. Well, we want $5,000 for you to use it. And you're going to be there for half a day, for example. Um, so each of those require resources from the production crew to source and find them. And also your budget will affect how much uh, planning you can do for your film. So smaller budget will have smaller planning time and the more locations that you need to go to is going to use up that time and resources. Because on a bigger budget film, they have the advantage of they'll often pay a location, um, location organiser and provider and then there's even companies that do it and they'll go around and they'll get that initial list together and then they'll get they'll hone it down to what's really working and then go and see them. But you might not have that. It might be, you know, the producer and the director doing that. Um, <clears throat> so fewer locations also makes a really big difference to your shooting schedule. So, and Neil will be able to attest to this because he's a cinematographer, but every time you change location, um, your crew has to pack up their equipment, put it in their trucks, their cars, they have to drive to that lo next location, then they have to unpack and set it up. And that can take up to two hours to be done, sometimes even longer. Um, so every time you move location when you're filming for a day, you can be burning hours. Now think if you've got three locations in one day of your schedule, you could be spending four or six hours not actually shooting your scenes. In fact, Neil, you've probably been on some product where you've, you know, it's, it's taken four or five hours just to pack up, move and reset up. Yeah, and, and I'm going to tell you a story just the opposite. We, we did a really low budget film and uh, they had done another shoot there before. So the whole idea was how can we do this most efficiently? And they already had a standing set. We came in with just a few pieces of furniture and we made it so they wrote it so this so they just moved in so everything's in boxes okay so we could move the boxes around for different sets and then we uh and then there was a road out back there was a, a, a an office up above and all these places were just with you know we could just carry our gear from here to there and and we could do a, a you know like a two-week shoot and, and, and get a lot of different locations. There was a, um, okay. a junkyard right next door, so we shot a scene there. And so we were able to do a lot. And the big thing was, is if you're lucky to find that before you start writing, then. Yeah, well, that's a good example. Sometimes people write a screenplay based on some locations they know they can get. And I mean, if you've got that studio, the great thing is you're getting multiple locations without actually having to, to move. Yeah. Or do those really big, what they call unit moves you know um so that will churn up your time so um so one way of getting around this you know with your scheduling and shooting is um a single location film so all the film happens at one location so again hitchcock loved doing this so he did with rope which is 
it's all set in one apartment and it works in real time. Essentially, it's a stage play. Uh, certainly nowhere near one of his best films, but it's, um, it's a very contained, cheap film to make. Um, there's Phone Booth, if anyone has saw that, which um, is a really, really great little thriller. And it's set pretty much all in a phone booth. So it's a, I think it's on a New York street. It happens there. There's Cube, that thriller that came out in, I think it was the early 90s, um, which is sort of got a thriller sci-fi element. And that's all built on, it's all set. So that would be similar to the example that Neil's talking about. So the idea, even though they've got to build sets and have a sound stage, it's all contained on that one place. So they're always at the same location. Um, really cool film came out several years ago, a science fiction film called Moon. Um, everyone saw that. And again, Moon isn't a film that you can make for 50 or or $100,000, but it's a science fiction. It's all set on uh, a moon base. And that's where all the action happens. Only a couple of characters. You know, a lot of them we're just seeing on screens and videos. But that's a much cheaper film to make than, say, 2001 Space Odyssey. So if you're going to go for science fiction and moon setting and it's all in that one contained location. It's a really effective and interesting little film. I suggest you uh, check it out. Um, and the one I mentioned before, Buried. It's a guy in a, in a coffin under the ground. I mean, you don't get more contained as a film location than that. And it works surprisingly well as a film. I was really wondering how they're going to maintain tension and escalation and all those sorts of things through it. But they actually do a really good job of of amping that up as it goes along. Um, so the other concept you can do within that is to combine this idea of minimal cast and single location. Um, and the classic one of this is the slasher film. So you take five teenagers out to a cabin in the woods and you kill them off one by one through your screenplay. So that's combining all of that. It's like you just need your location and your small cast and you're done. Those ideas are, you know, much, much cheaper to shoot. And when they're done well, are really effective. This doesn't just have to be horror films. The um, single location, small cast, we see this a lot with, with the friendship drama. You know, this is a group of friends who go away for the weekend. Um, the Big Chill, which is a great film, and this really popularised this storytelling mode. Um, now, despite that sort of an all-star cast, it's, they're spending their money on their cast, but it's very contained location-wise. Um, that would be the bigger end of the scale. But since then, there's just been endless films that are made like this, where a group of friends go away for a weekend down to the beach, or they go and stay at a farm, and all of this stuff comes out and things normally, um, you know, all these relationships are fractured by the ends and others come back together. And there's just been, you know, hundreds of thousands of films made on that subject matter. And especially if you go to film festivals, you see that a lot. There's all these, these films with sort of actors you wouldn't know, you know, so they're not established actors um, at a single location for a weekend. And it's, um, you know, they do really well. Interesting storytelling. And then your focus is just about those conflicts and dramas interacting between them rather than this broad uh, palette that you're working on with multiple locations. Um, Another non-horror example I was just thinking uh, was The Breakfast Club. It all took place at that high school. Perfect, yeah. That was actually one of the examples. I was just going to say Breakfast Club's a really good, really good example of that. Um, and also then you kind of go, oh, if you're writing it, it's, oh, gee, that's going to be bland. And one of the little tricks with it, um, and I look a bit at this in, in screenplay method, well, one step a day screenplay, when we get into the plotting section of the course and you do what's called French scenes. So you kind of go, we're going to have some stuff happen in the lounge and then we're going to have some stuff in the kitchen. And then there's going to be the characters that go off to their bedrooms, you know, the couples that go off in their bedrooms and they bitch about the other couples and some stuff in the backyard. So you're finding your, your variation and contrast within that location. And, 12 Angry Men does that really well. Um, if you have a look and they just go off, you know, they set up, there's the, um, the water fountain where they're getting a you know, drink and then they've got the window area. And then when they're putting their jackets and they'll break up these little moments like that. And Breakfast Club's the same. Just what I was going to talk about it, which you go around to different, different parts of the school and the, and the classroom. So you can still keep lots of, you know, dynamic visuals and variations happening. It doesn't feel, 
just go, oh, it's going to be people just sitting on a lounge, you know, um, talking. 